Let's bring in your friend and mine, former South Carolina Congressman and White House Chief of Staff, the great Mick Mulvaney. Mick, we have been speaking a lot here about Pennsylvania and that debate between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. Here was, though, Chuck Schumer caught on a hot mic talking about it with Joe Biden. <laughs> Mick, did Chuck Schumer watch the same debate the rest of us did? Yeah, keep him. Hey, James, it's great to see you again. Uh, keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, I think you cut off the beginning of that where I actually said, and we got really, really behind in this other race. And the fact that he's admitting to the president they're behind in any race is just kind of surprising. My guess is they're just telling Biden what he needs to hear. Biden is really not engaged. He's trying really hard, but as, as you've shown previously on this show, he's not. He's not the intellectual leader of this party right now. Mm. So I, I think they're just trying to tell him what they need to hear. Uh, they got pummeled in Pennsylvania. They know it. Um, the Democrat talking points of Democrat class here in Washington, D.C., where I am now, are, are just apoplectic about the fact that the, 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 uh, the debate even took place in Pennsylvania. Keep in mind, it's even worse than you folks showed in your clip during the debate. Fetterman has to have a machine that will transcribe audio questions into writing so he can read it because he can't. Com he can't um, uh, uh, process audio questions. So it's much worse than, they, than they're letting on and certainly much worse than Schumer told the president. And I mean, talking about that disengagement of Joe Biden, he's barely been seen in this campaign. But now I understand they're wheeling the president out in deeply Democrat areas like New York and New Jersey that should not be contested ground at all. Is that correct? Yeah, this and this is really stunning. This is the, the news that I don't think nearly enough people are talking about. He was an Portland, Oregon last week. He doesn't get any more Democrat than Portland, Oregon. He's in New York and New Jersey trying to help members of Congress whose district he won by 20 points in some circumstances. So the Democrats are just bleeding votes in California, New York, and New Jersey. I talked to my good friend Lee Zeldin. We served in Congress together just today, and he thinks he actually has a chance to win the governor's race in New York as a Republican. So the wheels are really starting to come off. Granted, it's still 10 or 11 days, uh, depending on what side of the dateline you're on, until the election. Um, but all signs are sort of pointing against the Democrats at this point, and they are running much more uh, scared than what uh, Schumer led on to the president in that clip. And, I mean, they've been keeping him in hiding, and I just have to wonder if it has anything to do with blunders like this one he recently made. We've got news. That Rashid... Rashid... Sanuk is now the prime minister. I mean, this is not the first time he has botched a foreign prime minister's name. And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Appreciate it, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> Mick, are they just terrified of more gaffes like that on the stump? They absolutely are. And the double standard is just outrageous. You correctly showed the New York Times uh, front page story that when Trump slipped coming down a step, um, at, at a speech, they were talking about his mental capabilities. He couldn't remember the last name of the, of the CEO of, uh, of the Apple Corporation. He goes, Tim from Apple. And they, they used that as evidence that he might be uh, unfit mentally to serve. So the double standard is outrageous. But no, uh, Joe Biden was famous for gaffes and misspeeches, even when he was completely in his right mind. And it's just gotten a lot worse. So um, I'm surprised I've got him out at all. But the fact they have him out in heavily Democrat areas tells you that they are desperate here as we go into the last fortnight of the campaign. And finally, just quickly, let's talk about that other Biden, Hunter Biden, and bank records that have been revealed showing that he may have been compromised by Chinese intelligence. I mean, surely, are we even surprised by this anymore? No, we're not. In fact, there's another story going around recently that perhaps the Obama administration may have covered some of that up, uh, which would be really devastating if it turned out to be true. It's very early in sort of the... Uh, it's sort of the coverage of that particular topic. But no, Hunter Biden has been an accident waiting to happen from the very beginning. Everybody knows it. And I think it's important that people realize the Biden family never expected to go back into politics after Joe left the, the, uh, the Obama White House. It was completely unexpected that he would run and win in 2016. So they acted as if they would never go back into this sort of public scrutiny that they have when you're in public office. And it's starting to show right now. My guess is that Hunter Biden's in a lot of trouble. And it's certainly not going to help his dad in the second half of his uh, of his first term. Mick Mulvaney, always a pleasure and always insightful. Thanks so much for joining us.